chapter four of four of my hero academia came out and I'm not super happy about it. And you know what's absolutely crazy about this is that I haven't read anybody else's public online opinion about chapter 404, so I could be absolutely alone on this hill. But I've put myself in front of the barreling Mack truck that is the MHA fandom before, and I'm willing to do it again. But here's the thing. I'm an absolutely massive fan of My Hero Academia. The My Hero Academia anime is the only anime that consistently either gives me goosebumps or makes me cry, and the manga is also, when you can understand what's going on, really good. But oh my god, is the manga the king of I'm not entirely sure what's happening in this fight, which is why we have the anime, but still. Now the manga and the anime to a degree are currently going through the final arc. The anime pretty much just started the ball rolling on the final arc and the manga is closing in on what will be the end stages of My Hero Academia very quickly. In fact, conservatively, I would estimate that My Hero Academia has less than 30 chapters left. At max, 50 chapters. My Hero Academia will be over by this time next year. But if it made it to 50 chapters, I would be blown away. And the public reception to the final arc of My Hero Academia has unfortunately kind of been a mixed bag. There are some people who absolutely adore the direction that the manga is going in and others who don't love it so much. And unfortunately, I find myself somewhere in the middle. And in the words of the great and wise 21 Savage, pick a side or die in the middle. And in actuality, I have picked a side. I tend to be more on the side of, I actually really enjoy this final arc than the side of, I don't enjoy this final arc. Because all of the chief complaints that are revolving around the final arc of My Hero Academia, I just haven't really bought. I understand where they're coming from, but I don't really resonate with them. However, with the coming of the most recent chapter of My Hero Academia, chapter 404, I'm starting to switch sides a little bit. See, there's two chief complaints about My Hero Academia's final arc. The first is that it feels rushed. With things like Deku figuring out four out of his seven new abilities off screen, with him just simply being introduced in the Vigilante arc, knowing Smoke and Float, and then once we get later on into the War arc, him just simply knowing Fajid and Gear Shift all without really giving us any behind the scenes of how he mastered these techniques. And while there is a fair amount of Deku trying to figure out these techniques as he goes, it's vastly uncomparable to the amount of training that we got to see him do in both One For All and even Black Whip. On top of this, some relatively heavy and important themes have been introduced during this final arc, like the fact that there is heteromorphic racism in the My Hero Academia universe that got introduced and wrapped up in a matter of two to three chapters. Which made a lot of people ask the question, why introduce themes that heavy if we're just gonna sweep them right under the rug. The second chief complaint about the ending of My Hero Academia is the fact that a lot of the incredible side characters that we've been introduced to over the course of 400 chapters aren't really playing their roles. That is to say that we've been introduced to this incredible cast of heroes, whether it be Class 1A, Class 1B, all the professional heroes we've met, heroes from other schools, and so on and so forth. And unfortunately, as this manga is coming to a close, a lot of these characters that we were introduced to aren't getting a moment to shine before the manga ends. And while I don't necessarily buy into either of these complaints, and I'll explain that in a second, Chapter 404 has made me realize that there is a third chief complaint that I do buy into, and that's Horikoshi she's inability to commit to a tone. But what do I mean by that? And why don't I agree with these chief complaints that the MHA fandom is launching at the final arc of MHA? Well, we're gonna answer all those questions and a whole lot more, but first, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And don't send me death threats, please. I really enjoy MHA. However, if you are going to direct death threats towards me, please do it in the comments of my Otaku's Anonymous podcast, because that'll drive traffic to it, and. I'd like to drive traffic to it. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Or if you want to direct me any death threats, do it after buying something from my merch store because it has some of the greatest anime sweatshirts, t-shirts, and sticker packs known to man. So, My Hero Academia, a completely rational and small fan base that will be nice to me, I'm sure. Let's talk about your final arc. See, I've wanted to make a video talking about My Hero Academia's final arc in the manga for a while now, mostly because I feel as though there's not enough hype around it. I mean, My Hero Academia is one of the most popular anime and manga in the world. However, even though there's incredibly hype things happening in the manga almost every single chapter, I see next to nobody talking about it. Now, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, because obviously you can be like, oh, that's because your FYP is tailored to you. But I get a fair amount of MHA content, and I interact with MHA content, and I am an anime TikToker slash YouTuber. My FYP and basically any social media that I interact with whatsoever is flooded with anime content. And therefore, I believe that I'm a pretty good bra for what's being talked about and what isn't being talked about 
in the anime community as a whole. Now, obviously, as I don't consume things like romance anime, I'm not a good barometer for that, but you get it, shonen. And while things like JJK, Kagurabachi, and even Black Clover, when it was in quarterly, have made splashes recently with their most recent manga chapters, I feel as though, even though there's so much going on in the MHA manga, there's been no massively viral moment. No chapter that brought the entire community together, that made MHA the forefront of conversation in the anime community. Nothing. Just nothing. And while I believe there is a litany of reasons that that could be the case, it could be the fact that this final arc has been going on for like a year and a half, it could be the fact that it is currently running in parallel with both Black Clover and JJK's final arcs, or unfortunately, it could be the fact that there might be some problems with this final arc. Now, like I've already stated, the general community believes there is two issues with this final arc, rushing and a lot of characters not getting their time to shine. Now, genuinely, I believe that these could both be considered the same issue because the reason that both of these issues exist is the same reason. And that is that Horokoshi doesn't want to make MHA as long as One Piece. See, here's the thing. I do understand where this sentiment is coming from. And I do think the complaints are somewhat valid. However, they're not complaints that I hold. Like, I understand why you hate rain, but I love it. But I guess with MHA, it's a bit more complex than that. Because here's the thing, the heteromorph example is actually a really good place to launch off our conversation. For those of you who are anime only, I don't know why you're watching this video, obviously massive manga spoilers ahead, but for those of you who are reading the manga, you'll know that in the manga, there was introduced a little arc where Koji, Annie Voice, and Shoji, Dupla Arms, are battling against a monsterized version of Spinner, which means there's three heteromorphs all battling it out. And now this battle is wrapped up in roughly five-ish chapters. However, the reason that this battle is interesting because these three characters are inherently not that interesting is the fact that Spinner is leading an army of heteromorphs. An army of heteromorphs that Spinner managed to get whipped up into an anger because heteromorphs are apparently treated as lesser than in the My Hero Academia universe, which is something that we've never been privy to for the entirety of My Hero Academia's run. And just kind of out of nowhere, it was decided that, oh yeah, heteromorphs don't do super well in society because everyone's mean to them. And wouldn't you know it, they're not so happy about it. But then just as quickly as the problem was introduced, it was solved. Which when you're dealing with something like institutionalized racism, it's kind of a crazy thing to figure out in three chapters. But Nick, we didn't want to have to do a whole Martin Luther King arc for Shoji, and yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. But it's like, just don't introduce it then. Like, I think the realization that we need to make here is that not all additions are good additions. Well, I do think it's realistic that heteromorphic racism would exist in the My Hero Academia universe. That's like a whole arc. Like have Deku meet a heteromorphic boy who's going through bullying because of the way that he looks, tie that somehow into the ideology that a hero doesn't discriminate who they save and therefore as a society we shouldn't be discriminating against other people. Use somebody like Spinner who's trying to trump up all the hatred of heteromorphs that are angry about the way that society has treated them and give that like a long fleshed out arc. Or just don't introduce it at all. I also think it's incredibly realistic that a large amount of people are massively crippled by their quirks, but I wouldn't say introduce that problem then try and fix it in three chapters. However, I don't necessarily agree with that sentiment when it's applied to Deku and how fast he figured out all of his quirks or his meta abilities, you get it. Because the real reason that we're not fleshing out the heteromorphic racism arc or Deku's training arc is like I said earlier, because Horikoshi doesn't want MHA to be the length of One Piece. But a bit more focus on Deku figuring out Fajin or Smoke or Float or Gear Shift would have been nice. We don't need an entire arc. We don't need as much training as he did for shoot style or you know his knuckle blasters but because horikoshi doesn't want mha to be as long as one piece but he still wants to give the people what they want he kind of has to walk a weird line between what do i flesh out and what do i not have time to and the same issue applies to most of the side characters not getting their time to shine in the final arc because here's the thing well it is absolutely a possibility that all of the crowd favorite side characters could get their own individual battles that last two to three chapters and it shows you the true scope of the war what we've been given is actually better than what a lot of people were complaining about in the earlier parts of the final arc as many of the characters who have been introduced throughout the duration of mha's run have gotten a moment in the sun gentle criminal the tornado guy from the western school whose name i'm completely forgetting were both massively instrumental in making sure that ua didn't plummet to the ground tokuyami used a version of his ragnarok to battle against all for one for a little bit. Shinso was able to use his mind control ability to control Gigantamachia to battle against all for one for a little bit. Ayama and Toru, the invisible girl, got a fight. And so on and so forth. A lot of side characters have got a moment to shine. However, somewhat ironically, the real way that most of the side characters have gotten a chance to shine 
is through the medium of All Might. Because while yes, some side characters have shown up to the final arc, a lot of side characters, especially from 1A, have only had an impact in the final arc because All Might used a bunch of their abilities in his totally not Iron Man suit. This isn't the case for everybody. I mean, obviously people like Uchaku and Todoroki got massive battles, but they're also main characters. Uh, so once again, Horikoshi has had to decide who's gonna get screen time and who isn't. And I think he's done that admirably. So for a long time, I believe that the majority of the hate that was directed towards MHA was unjustified. And I still, by and large, do. And this isn't anything new to me. Usually I exist outside of the public opinion of the My Hero Academia fandom. My Villain Academia was my favorite arc. That's Japan's least favorite arc. However, Chapter 404 isn't sitting right with me. See, multiple times, the final part of this manga has given me goosebumps. We have gotten straight up incredible moments. And while I'm assuming that chapter 404 for a lot of people was a moment just like that, for me, it, it wasn't. See, here's the thing. The through line to all of the complaints that people have about the ending of My Hero Academia is unfortunately, I'm gonna call it half-acidness. Let's call it half commitment. Half of the side characters get to be important. Half of Deku's abilities, we get to see how he learned them. Half of the themes and tones being introduced in this final arc are being fleshed out. Now, like I said, all of these problems tie back to the core root of the issue, length. However, I believe that chapter 404 introduced a new kind of half commitment. A new type of half commitment whose true root isn't length. See, to me, chapter 404 introduced a half commitment to tone. What do I mean by this? Because it's incredibly ambiguous. Well, let me give you my perfect example of what I think tonal shifts should look like in manga. Much in a similar capacity that a movie has rising action that leads to a climax, and then you have falling action that leads to an ending, I believe that tonal shifts should be smooth, points that lead to either incredible highs or incredible lows. Which means, if hypothetically I believe you have a half commitment to tone, if your parabolic tonal shift could be this large, I believe that you're only accessing this much. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're only taking away from the highs. It also means that we're taking away from the lows. So it actually doesn't look like this, it more looks like this. Not only are we dampening the highs, but we're also dampening the lows. Meaning that there's no guttural stomach punches, but there's also no moments of sheer euphoria. And this is what I like to call safe writing. It's formulaic. The good guys win, the bad guys lose, none of the good guys die, and the main character gets married to his love interest at the end. Or her love interest. It works. We've done it for hundreds of years. We will continue to do it for hundreds of years. However, and this might just be because I'm sick, I don't necessarily enjoy this. I do believe that there's plenty of stories that do the formula better than other stories, and that's why they're popular. Looking at you, Naruto, looking at you, Black Clover, and apparently looking at you, My Hero Academia. What I've realized with age is that I'm beginning to break away from the formula. I love a guttural stomach punch because you know what comes with a guttural stomach punch, usually, if the story is well written, is a moment of revenge-fueled, anger-driven, euphoria. Let's say hypothetically, one of the main characters dies at the hands of the final baddie. Not only does that set the tonal shift that whatever is going on is incredibly serious, but can also have a real life effect on the viewer or the reader. It can make them sad or angry, but more than anything, it makes them want the final bad guy to lose. But there's a way to do this. There are certain main characters that you can kill and certain main characters that you can't. You're not going to kill the main character of the story because the main character of the story has to make it to the end. I mean, you could kill the main character of the story and that would be sick, but nobody does it. And thus the way I look at this is that we have to identify what main characters have exhausted their usefulness to the story and also in terms of power and plot. Those are the main characters you kill. People with mass appeal who no longer technically have a use in the story. And JJK just pulled this off to a T. Now, I'm not going to say who dies or who kills who, but just know recently in the JJK manga, somebody important died at the hands of somebody else important. And while this did result in at least one person contacting the actual Taliban to set out a hit on Gege Gatami, the mangaka of JJK, JJK trended number one everywhere. It was the most talked about thing on the internet for days. Real life shrines with photos and candles were set up all across the world to give love to this character that had passed away. And while people were upset that the character was gone and upset about how it happened, there has never been more hype around the manga because everybody wants the bad guy who killed the good guy 
gone. So JJK was up here because the good guy was doing really good in the battle against the bad guy. But then immediately the tone bombs because the good guy is dead and it's an important good guy. So currently the tone is as low as it could be. So JJK is currently on the uptick. And when that bad guy is defeated at the hands of a revenge-fueled main character, it will see the highest high we've ever seen. And sure, maybe you bring the good guy back to life after everything is all said and done. Whatever, who cares? I mean, that's kind of annoying, but hey, then everybody gets a happy ending. But you know what you don't do? What chapter 404 of My Hero Academia just did. See, my biggest thing with My Hero Academia, and the reason that I've wanted to talk about it for so long, is because for the last three or four weeks, I've seen that All Might is gonna die. All Might has been locked into one of the most legendary battles in My Hero Academia's entire history with All For One for the last, like, month and a half. However, about two or three weeks ago, the Iron Man suit crapped out on him, and it looked as though that... He was done. And I was so perplexed by this. Not because Horikoshi was going to kill All Might. I thought that was awesome. But because no one was talking about it. Here we have JJK trending on every single social media platform because somebody of All Might's level of importance in the JJK manga died. In fact, the parallels between All Might and the character who died in JJK are almost infinite. And yet people were only talking about JJK. Why was no one talking about All Might? I feel like I've been yelling into the void about MHA's manga for the last three or four weeks and I'm not getting an echo. And I think the reason why is because of Horikoshi's lack of commitment to a tone. All right, listen, here's the thing. The war has been brutal. There's been massive sprawling battles between Uchaku and Toga that have led to things like Toga's death, Dobby in a battle against Endeavor, and Todoroki and the rest of his family made sure that they looked like him for the rest of their lives. Miss Midnight, Stars and Stripes, Crust, and Less. So many people have died from both the good guys and the bad guys. Obviously, we also lost twice at the beginning of all of this. It's only ever been side characters, at least from the good guys' side, that we lost. Yes, Toga and Twice have died, but they're the bad guys. They're supposed to die. And while main characters like Todoroki have definitely been in danger of dying, only one main character has died, and that was Bakugo. But Bakugo returned in Chapter 403 because Edshot committed himself to, I think, becoming his heart. And here's the thing. I'm not calling for Todoroki or Bakugo's death. No, because they still have purpose to the story. They exist as Deku's Deuteragonists. Much in the same capacity that it wouldn't have killed Sasuke during Naruto Shippuden or Naruto. Now in Boruto, his death makes sense. Because with Rini Sharing gone and Sarada fully grown and him being a rogue ninja, his usefulness to the story... I wouldn't say is nothing, but it's definitely less than it ever has been before. And so at a certain point, his death means more than what his character surviving would mean. So Bakugo coming back to life, not only did I see coming, but also I thought was cool. However, it was what Bakugo did immediately after coming back to life that I have qualms with. See, Horikoshi usually doesn't kill main characters, and genuinely, I believe that's why MHA is falling behind JJK. But it appeared as though in the last couple of chapters, Horikoshi was gonna do the unthinkable that he was going to kill All Might. However, Bakugo, after being alive for all of 30 seconds, decided, I'm going to be the fastest I've ever been. So he blasts over to Deku, who uses gear shift for a second time to throw him at All For One, who's holding All Might like he's about to send him through a table in WWE. And as Bakugo is zooming towards All For One, there's a story about how people's prayers have the ability to affect things to make the impossible possible, which was like, it was, it was kind of cool, I guess. And when you know it, Bakugo not only saves All Might, but also takes tears off all for one's hands. So yay, All Might's not gonna die. So we can live on to teach, I guess. You know, after the story of My Hero Academia is over. Listen, here's the thing, because people are gonna skew this narrative into me saying that I want All Might dead. That's not what I'm saying. I love All Might as a character. I don't hate him. It's not like I want him gone from the story. However, his death would serve more purpose than him surviving. I can be thankful that All Might is still alive and also acknowledge the fact that his death would have been better than him surviving. And I think All Might not dying is why more people are talking about JJK than MHA. But then, okay, Nick, if you're such a genius, how would you have written it? Well, the problems for me actually began before Chapter 404. Well, that's actually not true. Okay, now that I understand what happens in 
chapter 404, my rewrite would have started prior to chapter 404. I liked everything up to this point. See, I believe that MHA could have followed a very similar trajectory to what happened in JJK. That is to say that a sprawling, massive, epic battle happens between one of the main good guys and one of the two final baddies. And the conclusion of this massive, sprawling, epic battle is the death of the good main character. However, the circumstances between JJK and MHA would be different. Because here's the thing, saving All Might from death at the hands of All for One was done to show everybody around the world that we still have a chance in this fight. I mean, Bakugo literally screams, we'll win this. So saving All Might was to shift the tone upwards, to show a changing in the tides, to reassure us as a fandom that the good guys are gonna win. But here's the thing, All Might's death could have done the same thing and it would result in lower valleys but higher peaks and this is where my rewrite begins see initially all might wanted to explode himself on all for one to make all for one weakened and go back into his child state he says it he's like with this death hopefully you'll return back to being a kindergartner in order to put all for one in a weakened state so somebody else can finish the job however horikoshi didn't allow that to happen because he knew all might was going to be saved the whole time see me personally I wouldn't have stopped that attack. But stopping that attack does technically lead to a deeper valley. See, because All Might was gonna go out in a flash, he was gonna give his life to being a hero. However, because All For One stops it and then proceeds to torture and taunt All Might as he holds him above his head, the tone of the manga shifts downwards. It's dreary, it's dark, there's less hope for the future turning out well. Which is cool, but it does present the logistical issue of how are we gonna switch this tone? And that leaves you with really only two options. One, save All Might, or two, have Deku and Bakugo get absolutely bloodlusted by All Might's death and begin to swing the tides of the battle onto their favor because of the anger coursing through their veins. JJK chose the second option. Everybody's so mad at the main bad guy that they're actually starting to shift the tone towards the bad guys losing. But MHA went the first route. But if you don't stop the self-explosion, you don't come to this crossroads. See, if you allow All Might to explode himself as All For One is holding him, and therefore or create a weakened version of All For One. He has served a purpose. His entire battle has served a purpose, which is more than we can say about All Might's future because he's not getting back in the fight. He's not gonna land the final blow. Within the capacity of My Hero Academia's story, all Might's role is finished. Sure, at the end of the manga, he'll be around to ruffle Deku's hair, but that's kind of it. So by saving him, we've kind of just introduced pointless drama. It's death baiting. So how I would write it is that I would have All For One go through with this explosion, which creates actual stakes for the story. One of the main characters just died. One of the most beloved characters in the universe just died. This war is real. Its consequences are real. You can wipe out a thousand cities. You can have a ton of civilians die. We don't know them. We have no attachment to them. Sure, Miss Midnight is gone, but Miss Midnight was a side character. The emotional impact of her death would be nothing compared to All Might. On top of this, this creates real palpable anger towards All For One. And then in the midst and chaos of the explosion as All For One is reeling and we're trying to grasp with the reality that All Might is no longer around, Bakugo shoots through the explosion and presses the offensive on a now weakened All For One. And as he shoots through the explosion, he screams out, we have to capitalize on this moment he gave us. We give real palpable purpose to All Might's sacrifice. Bakugo's reveal back into the story has more weight. It's more energy. And we have now not only reached our lowest valley, but are currently skyrocketing towards our highest peak. Not to mention that Bakugo capitalizing on All Might's passing is a literal torch passing moment and it's not a torch passing moment that has to be said in words so just as all for one and shigaraki are celebrating their win and realizing that the entire world is going to be cast into misery over the loss of all might bakugo immediately identifies himself as the new carrier of flame the hero who will bring the worlds into enlightenment well both him and deku the next generation of the one and two hero and this is a perfect example of using action to push forward your plot as opposed to words and just telling us that things are happening which is what chapter 404 was but what do i know i'm the guy who wants all might dead apparently but what do you guys think do you think saving all might was the right thing to do tell me in the comments below and why you guys are down there please for me like this video subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell I'd like to once again reiterate i really enjoy mha